Elon Musk bought Twitter today. For $44 billion. October 27th marks the year anniversary of the Twitter takeover, which we now call X. But in the past year, there have been countless changes. Some more recent changes, X removing headlines, giving you an option so that only verified users can reply, creating a monetization system and encouraging creators and journalists to post on X. In this video, I talked to Robert Scoble, who was there at the very beginning of Twitter. Uh, what's your, um, your best uh, social application uh, you cannot live uh, without? But of the newer ones, that's a tough one. Twitter. Twitter would be number two, two, Facebook would be number three. He's seen the birth of Twitter, and now he's seeing the birth of X. It hasn't found its own stride yet, um, and we're expecting it to. So the next year or two is going to be, I think it's going to be really interesting to watch X. We'll also hear from Tesla Boomer Mama, who has her own affiliate badge, and we'll find out how that program is working for her and her affiliates. There is no better option, but this option isn't optimal yet. And finally, we'll hear from Brian Krasenstein, an independent journalist on X, about how X is really changing the game for creators and what he thinks could still be improved. Uh, I think things are finally starting to come together, at least part of Elon's plan and Linda's plan are coming together. Uh, definitely, I mean, for creators, it's it's definitely going to draw creators here. Well, I was at the first South by Southwest where Twitter was announced, and I knew the founders before that. Last year at South by Southwest, Twitter caught on, and in many ways, the conference made Twitter an overnight sensation from obscurity to omnipresence. For the last year, Web 2.0 apps have accumulated in the social network in which Twitter is a major player. So let's back up to like 2000, <laughs> right? Um, Evan Williams ran a company called Blogger, and I worked. I, I was uh, using a competitor's product called Us Radio Userland, and we all knew each other. I, I actually, in 2001, ran a social software dinner at, in a place in Mountain View, and Evan Williams and Biz Stone showed up, and that that was back when they worked at Blogger, right? Um, and so then they sold it to Google, made some money, and started a little podcasting company, and then quickly switched to what we know as Twitter today, uh, right in 2006. Um, so I, I heard about it at South by. I heard about it a few times after that, but I really wasn't that interested yet. Um, uh, I was working at a small little um, podcasting company or a media company, little startup. Uh, back in 2006, and an uh, uh, employee there uh, told me about, tw got me on Twitter. He's like, dude, you have to get on Twitter now. It's the coolest thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> there was 11,000 people or 12,000 people on it before I joined. Um, and that was November of 2006. So just about, yeah, 18 years ago. And you were saying that for a while you were the most followed person on Twitter? Yeah, because um, before, uh, between 2000 and 2007, I, I had a really important tech blog in Silicon Valley um, uh, where I launched a lot of companies. So I would be talking about all, all sorts of startups and tech things that are happening. I, I worked at a computer programming magazine back in the, in the in 1990s, and that got me into this. And so I had a famous tech blog, and when Twi when I got on Twitter, I started talking about Twitter nonstop on my blog. And so I got a lot of my readers that were on my blog to come over to Twitter. And that's that's why for the first two years of Twitter's life, I was the most followed per person on, on Twitter. Well, it's interesting to me because you've seen the, the birth of Twitter and its evolution, and now here we are at the birth of X. So if you could yeah. kind of compare the two, I know that we're still in the early days of X, but that's kind of the focus of this piece is we're coming up on the year anniversary of X. It was messy, <laughs> you know, as, as uh, it is. I mean, Elon came in and cleared a lot of employees out and did it in a very messy uh, public way, right? And 
we still haven't seen the new X really come yet. It, it, there's a lot of things that are about to come, like new video features, new list features, new community features that Elon's promising. And of course, everybody's waiting to see what Elon does with AI. Um, you know, today, uh, I mean, Twitter is still roughly the same. It was a, a year ago with more features, but it, it, it really hasn't become a real it hasn't found its own stride yet um and we're expecting it to, to so the next year or two is going to be i think it's going to be real interesting to watch x but particularly because of ai but as ai comes along and gets used uh for various purposes it should dramatically change the product and then elon's you know I, I always been saying he bought twitter to build an everything app right uh, an app that's sort of like wechat in china so if people don't know what wechat in china is it's an app that you can buy things on there's a social network so the the twitter piece is in there um and there and there's a photo sharing thing in there right so there's sort of like an instagram sort of like an amazon and sort of like a, a twitter all mixed together in one app and that that's sort of what he's aiming at the world is different than it was, you know, 18 years ago when Twitter started up, right? Back then, I mean, I I was the 13,000th person on Twitter and I read every single post that was made in six months between the launch in March and when I got it on it in November. I read every post that happened before, which was about 70,000 posts. Twitter gets that many posts in a fraction of a second now. So there's no way I could read all the posts that were done even in just the last few seconds on Twitter, right? And so it's a different world now. We need help to find value out of this flood of information that's coursing through uh, Twitter's data centers, right? And we haven't seen it yet. We're waiting. We, we're all the survivors and we're all waiting for Elon to really dramatically change this product and see where it goes from here. And that's sort of where we are. We're, you know, so it's a good time to look backwards and say, okay, that was fun. We certainly have come a long way since the early days, you know, the, in the early days, Twitter was down every couple hours. I mean, I, certainly if you were at South by Southwest, it was hard to get a cell service. It was hard to make a post. It was hard to read posts those days are gone and it's worthy of celebrating that we've come from that to a reliable service today where we can watch the world's news go by. Um, but I'm expecting some real, real big changes next year. We're also starting to see more affiliate badges pop up, including one from the Boomer House. But I just have this idea and then I'm so over entrepreneurial. I just want to do things, right? So uh, sometimes I would, really be advised to, you know, think a little bit, just calm down and think. Tesla Boomer Mama decided to make her own affiliate badge using her own money to make it happen. And I thought, yeah, that's actually a good idea. How about proposing that to my subscribers that if they want to be creators, if they want to, you know, experiment this together, let's just do it. And then I thought this through, went on the terms and conditions of, of uh, verified organizations, and then I just did it. The same evening, I set up the LLC. So it became the Boomer House LLC, a California LLC. The promise from X, two times organic reach. The problem, having to cough up $1,000 a month just for the organization and then an additional $50 per affiliate. It quickly becomes expensive. It sounds as if, you know, I'm getting rich here. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it. Check out this post. In August, the ex-verified account boasted, what's better than organic reach? Right, two times organic reach. That's what Verified Orgs gets your business, plus affiliate badges for team members, the ability to feature open jobs on your profile, and more. We were born on August the 10th. So that is now exactly two months ago. Boomer House has grown since being approved as a verified organization with a subscription page, Stripe accounts, and everything a real business requires. And like many of the new features, Alexandra has been trying to help the X team troubleshoot some of the issues, having weekly emails for months now to give feedback and get some help. Well, no doubt about it that, you know, we really 
wanted to see how this works, whether it works, and it, it coincided obviously with monetization on X. Now, it wasn't um, about me making more money. I mean, uh, you can imagine how much I really would have to create to actually get those thousand bucks a month back. So for me, that this was clear, this was going to be a, a net lose, a net loser. Uh, but it was to give all these smaller accounts the possibility, first of all, to reach the 500 subscribers more easily, because that's what you need to then activate subscriptions, but also obviously just give them a megaphone for, for reach. But then it became much more. We have a DM group, we're organizing trips, we're, you know, lots of other, we've got our own merchandising. So, so it has become much more than what, what was the in, uh, initial intention. And I'm sure X wanted us to become much more, not just the funnel through of affiliate badges, because that's not allowed. It became really sort of a membership association like AAA, right? Where, where you have a common goal, but you also have a lot of other services around it. But has the promise of better reach been fulfilled for all 100 plus affiliates? Well, it's complicated. So the problem always is, is it your content? Is it the day? Are there just now so many other people there? So, so you have problems understanding what it is. Also, X obviously saying only impressions and interactions with verified account that are blue check mark themselves count. Now we have no grip on how many of our followers and interactions are with blue check marks or not with blue check marks. So it's it remains quite obscure. She says while she's still unsure of what the future holds for Boomer House, she wants to keep everything they've built going with or without the badge. While not everyone may be moved to hop on the affiliate badge train, there are more and more reasons to buy that blue check mark, a subject that some are still sore about and others questioning if free speech is really free. One of the complaints that I see a lot of is, you know, it's, it's not Twitter anymore. And, and mm -hmm. mainly that, you know, you're, you're going to, to have a better experience, it kind of seems like you have to pay up at least eight dollars a month, seven eight dollars, right, for your for your blue check mark. And then there's this new idea of getting an affiliate badge. So, what do you think about that changing landscape of of having to yeah. pay and people really pushing back against that? Yeah, yeah. I, I I completely agree with you. It's it's completely changed the attitude, and anybody saying the contrary is not true to themselves. Um, I think the camaraderie we had up to February, March, before this whole monetization idea really came up, um, has suffered. And I've said so before. This is not the first time I'm saying so. And, and I've said that all the while, while I get paid, right? I mean, how, how I, um, that's the irony, right? It is clear when I got my first payout, which was the biggest check of all, because it was for a six months period, it was a thousand eight hundred bucks. I'd never even imagined a second that I would get a hundred bucks, right? So you get a thousand eight hundred bucks. Now, to be true, a thousand eight hundred bucks in my life don't make a huge difference. I mean, it's nice to have, and I bought Tesla stock with it, so that there's no doubt about it. But it's not as if you know, if I would suddenly not have this 1,800 bucks that my lifestyle would change or that, you know, I couldn't pay food on the table or my kids couldn't go to their schools. No, I have a very demanding day job, but which pays very well. So this 1,800 was nice to have, but the icing on the cake. When that payment came that, that very day, you know, you had a clear scar, I would say, in the X community. Those that got paid, that were surprised, proud, showed it off, including me, and those who were not. And that scar, I think, I think that was end of June, beginning of July, something like that. That scar is still there. One of the most recent changes, there is a setting to allow only verified users to reply. Some think this walks a fine line. Others see it as a path to weeding out bots, encouraging more people to get X premium and creating a level of exclusive engagement. I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. I, I, I And I used a word that is probably very <laughs> very, uh, he knows about it, which is apartheid. I'm not going to do reply apartheid between people who paid or didn't pay. That I pay, that I pay even for an affiliate badge, that's my story, right? But if I want to get my message out, if I want to share this with my community, I'm not going to segregate it between those who pay and those who pay not. It's just not the way I'm wired. And if that becomes a thing, now, 
you'll tell me if somebody has millions of followers and can segregate that and allows them to not have the bots and to not have all. Fair enough. Good enough. Why not? But imagining that me with my 88,000 has a bot problem, you got to be kidding. Um, and it, the simple fact that if you don't follow these people anyway, these bots, you don't see their stuff. Or if you see them, well, you hide them and block them and they're gone. So I, I just feel this segregation, this apartheid between this group and that group, um, completely unnecessary. It's, it, it's going into a corner where I'm actually surprised. And uh, and I think it's a shame because we, we can really learn a lot by listening to the other side and disagreeing because it brings our thoughts forward and allows us to reformulate our position and we may still not agree and it doesn't matter that lots of other things we can agree on so going back to the town square that elon imagined we're very far from that today we're now in a paying up scheme which probably helps with the bots but i'm actually surprised because with ai and the whole thing you would think that bots could find a technological way of being dealt with rather than a paying up thing. I want X to be profitable. Only profitable businesses will, at the end of the day, you know, help to serve everybody else. You can't, as a society, have a business that is constantly losing money. And Twitter was constantly losing money, right? So let, let, I understand that things have to move but I don't like the way this is moving at the moment. Now, again, I don't like it, but yet here still, I still am. I still like it much, much more than any other social media platform. I still like it much, much more than any other way of expressing my opinions. You know, I guess, I guess to start, like, what is your overall summary of how the past year has been? And do you think that X is heading in a better direction than we saw with Twitter? Yeah, definitely. I I think that things got off to a rocky start back in November, December, January. But uh, I think things are finally starting to come together. At least part of Elon's plan and Linda's plan are coming together. Uh, definitely. I mean, for creators, it's it's definitely going to draw creators here, especially the new monetization options, the ad share, uh, the where users can share in the advertising revenue within their post. Uh, Subscriptions, I think that's going to be big. And I think eventually, I think when they start monetizing video better, I think that's probably going to be what drives the most of the more of the larger creators to X. Uh, whereas some of these other features like the revenue share and subscriptions will drive people here. I don't think the really big creators will come until they kind of add video monetization features. Right. And maybe better live streaming capabilities. I mean, I myself am a full-time creator, but I am still not making, you know, as much money on X as I do on YouTube, which I don't even right. make that much on YouTube to put it into perspective. It sounds like you're making a decent amount of revenue from watching your video with Herbert. Um, but it seems like there are still some you know, hiccups in, in the process. One of the kind of frustrating things on my end is seeing, you know, memes or like these accounts that are just kind of maybe kind of junk, you know, and they get a lot of impressions or they're stirring up controversy and, and getting those numbers. So do you think that, you know, there's a way to kind of curb this on purpose, bad behavior, that's kind of junk content just to make money? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think eventually the algorithm will do that. And I think people will get tired of engaging with some of the, I guess you could say crappier content. Uh, but I, I think probably algorithmically, they, they can do some things. I think that if they added some sort of feature for tipping good posts, I think maybe then people will be even more incentivized to produce good content that people actually enjoy, uh, rather than just content that gets views because there's a difference, right? Like, I, I mean, like you can post something controversial and get a whole lot of views just because people engage on it, or you can post something that people really might enjoy or value that might not get as many views, but if they enjoy it and value it, maybe you'll get tips from it. So I, I think if they can do both and kind of balance the two, which is revenue share for ads and maybe some sort of tipping mechanism, I think that could probably be 
a way to counter some of the, the bad postings that you're talking about. Well, and you interact with Elon, I think a fair amount, right? Yeah. I mean, he replies to some of my posts. Uh, I of course reply to his posts, but, uh, yeah. I, I'd say so. He's kind of the the reason you were allowed back on the platform, correct? If I'm I'm looking at the history, you guys were banned from Twitter. Yeah. So in 2019, May of 2019, we were banned, and Twitter said that we purchased our accounts, and they kept saying they they stuck with that, and we ended up hiring a lawyer, and we weren't we weren't going to sue them for banning us. We were going to sue them because they put out a statement that was inaccurate to the media after we got banned. And in that discussion between our lawyers and their legal department back in 2019 and 20, uh, they basically told us why we were banned. It was that we bought our accounts and we we're like, wait a minute. We, and when I say we, I mean, Ed and I, my twin brother, uh, we we're like, wait, we didn't buy our accounts. And we ended up showing them the emails from like 2000 and I guess it was like 11, 10 or 11, where we actually registered the accounts and, uh, they were like, okay, well, we're still not unbanning you sue us. And it, it just wasn't worth like, you know, like it, it wasn't worth the time and the money that it would have taken. Our lawyers estimated that it could run up in like the low six figure uh, area for just legal cost. Uh, so we were like, okay, well, like that's definitely not worth it. So then in November, Elon, Elon bought the company uh, and we had a contact with Ella Irwin, who was running trust and safety, safety there. I actually reached out to her because I was connected to her with on LinkedIn. And uh, she gave me the uh, email of another individual who's no longer at the company. And that individual had us on band within, I think it was like two hours back in December, I guess it was. Wow. And I mean, things have changed for you drastically since then, right? I mean, you're very active on X. It's, is it your full-time job right now? No, I, I mean, like I was act so I was active on X, like back before we were banned wasn't getting paid despite what people claim. <laughs> uh, it, it's not my full-time job. Like I, I run two companies, actually three companies. Uh, and, and like that takes up a lot of my time, but I do have a lot of free time. And, and in my free time, I, I enjoy just kind of posting my thoughts and beliefs and interacting. I, I think it's a very interesting platform. And, and I, I, I like the ability to engage with people that might have views counter to my own in a respectful way. Um, but do you think that, you know, Twitter was stagnating and, you know, was in need of, of this sort of, uh, you know, rebirth? Yeah, Twitter has been mismanaged in a lot of ways for a long time. We just haven't seen a whole lot of change, a whole lot of innovation, a whole lot of new features. The service hasn't really gotten dramatically easier to use. It hasn't gotten dramatically easier to clean up your follows. And then there was a whole bunch of problems with, you know, how they censored people and, and all that, which I didn't care that much about, but it, it, it had an effect. It, it just, the management wasn't very good. And Elon coming along, yeah, it was messy for a while, but now it's like, we're starting to get new features and new things and we're seeing a new attitude from the staff there we're in an in-between period right now and i think we'll have a very different conversation in a year from now than we will today well and obviously one of the biggest changes is just the incentive for creators and the monetization and you know i saw recently that you were able to share a long form episode and Elon shared that, which probably helped you greatly. So, yeah. I mean, I want to, you know, you and I are both creators. So this is something that we've never seen before with Twitter is actually, you know, potentially being able to make, make a good living. Well, yeah, it's getting close. <laughs> you know, it's certainly, I'm, I'm, I'm making a few hundred dollars. So it's not a, it's not enough to make a living yet. Um, there are people who are making a decent living. So God bless them. Um, he is trying to shift the service from being something that used to be only 165 character messages, right? R really small uh, tweets, which were designed for the SMS system of mobile phones back, you know, 18 years ago. 
now we don't care about that so much. We don't need it to be short. And we're watching a lot more video. I mean, the real competitor is TikTok right now, which takes took a lot of people uh, because people like to look at videos rather than read texts, right? Twitter is, uh, is for a, a more um, educated person because of that, right? Uh, it's a little less about entertainment a little bit more about getting the news or getting uh understanding what an industry is doing stuff like that so um change is in the air and he's trying to change it, it the long form video is a good example of that twitter is not a really good place to watch a long form video right now and so we need to see a lot of changes to how you discover video uh, how you can watch video and still be reading, uh, you know, all the posts on the site, um, you know, and giving you insight into, let, let's say I put up a 45 minute video, you know, give us AI insights into that video. What's really important in that video to watch, right? And take us straight there if we want to go, you know, straight to where we're talking about, you know, Apple Vision Pro or something, right? You could take us right to that piece of the video if you had an AI that that had transcripts and had chapter markings and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying. There, there's so much new AI to come uh, to come to bring us new features, to bring us new use cases, to bring us uh, ability to watch and con consume longer, you know, uh, text, right? Maybe even book form text uh, and uh, uh, longer interview kind of shows or helpful shows that people do. You know, here's, you know, how to do something in, in technology. Um, that'll be interesting. And I, of course, Twitter is really like, a thousand little micro communities. I mean, there's the baseball Twitter, the football Twitter, the car Twitter, right? The the banking Twitter. There's all sorts of different Twitter, the, the, the politics Twitter, right? There's all sorts of different Twitters that you can find. And it, it all needs to improve. Every single one of these things re relies on content that people enjoy and get something out of. And it's time to, you know, step up the game and give us a new kind of service. And, you know, that's, that's what keeps me on the service is it's not the thousand or $2,000 I make a month on it. And I'm trying to grow that, but you know, I'm not trying to grow it by, uh, you know, being sensationalistic because some, some people figured out, Oh, you can be sensationalistic and attract an audience and get paid, but that doesn't work long-term. Uh, you have to find an audience that cares about you. Right. Well, and I'm I'm hoping that that's something that smooths out because that is one of the you know things that I was talking about uh, with it with another person I interviewed. It it almost seems like a lot of the feed that I have now is kind of garbage and junk that is just content farming and meant to be you know uh, divisive and and stir up emotions, mute, which is not mute, what I want. Mute is your friend. <laughs> you know? I've been muting a lot of people this year, trying to get my feed cleaned up. Um, or unfollowing them right in the worst cases, but, um, I'm trying to get my feed to be just AI people and just people who talk about AI mostly. And that's, you know, it, it's, it's not easy to do, but it's possible and it's only possible on X. Now, some of the others are starting to get muting features, you know, on Twitter or on X, you can mute a certain word. So if you don't want to see the word Trump anymore. Uh, for instance, you can mute that and it, you shouldn't be able to see it anymore. It, that's not perfect, but most of it's gone, right? Just by muting a single word. You can't do that on Facebook, right? And so it's, uh, or LinkedIn, right? And so it, Twitter is a unique service in the world where you can see real time. Like I use TweetDeck, so I can see the world raining by just without touching anything that just new tweet comes in and starts going down my screen. You can't do that on Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok, and you can't uh, filter it. You can't get rid of Trump, for instance, right? On, on X, you can, but on the others, you can't. So those two things together, are what keeps me on Twitter. And then the promise of new 
of new AI driven features and new capabilities is what's also keeping me on. Well, and speaking of changes, I mean, there have been so many changes and a lot of them are, you know, really creating uh, some disruption. A lot of people upset, for example, the blue checks, the most recent one or one of the most recent ones getting rid of headlines, you know, so it seems like some of these maybe still need to be smoothed out. What is your favorite change that you've seen and what is a change that maybe still leaves you scratching your head a little bit? Hmm. The second one's harder to answer. Uh, the long form posts, uh, the ability to write a long post and really chew on a topic and do that. That's a new thing I like a lot. Um, getting paid was very shocking and surprising, you know, getting a, a you know, a thousand bucks every, every month. Um, uh, that, that's nice. You know, it's the first one that's ever paid me. Right. I'm on face. I've been on Facebook just as long. I don't get paid by them. And I've been on LinkedIn as long. And I haven't gotten paid by them. So that's surprising. Um, things that still, uh, there's been so many uh, layoffs and stuff that you can see pieces of the, um, of the service are uh, breaking. For instance, lists on a mobile phone don't often load posts. So that's sort of, you know, when is this going to get fixed? And uh, Elon laid it out in one of the audio spaces he was on. He says it really needs a complete rewrite. There's a reason we didn't get very many new features out of the old uh, regime. It's very inflexible code that's underneath. So we're still waiting for that complete rewrite to happen. When that complete rewrite happens, that's when we're going to get new AI features that are going to make the service a lot more interesting or easy to use, right? But that's still in the future, and that's still a little bit of, you know, conjecture on my part, talking to employees and listening to Elon talk and stuff like that. Do you think that X is becoming a much better, you know, public town square than Twitter was? Yeah, yeah, that it definitely is. Uh, I, I mean, there's no doubt about it. And there's there's going to be people that are saying, oh, it's more hateful or allowing all this speech, even if it's hate speech is not the right way to go. But I, I think that if you look at X now as compared to maybe like six, seven, eight months ago, like around the March time frame, things have drastically improved. Uh, there's not as much hate that I'm seeing. I think that there's several reasons for this. I think number one, uh, the blue check mark, when people have to add a credit card and kind of identify themselves, they're a lot less likely to be hateful. Uh, it cuts down on the number of trolls. People usually aren't going to pay a monthly subscription fee uh, and then risk getting deboosted or whatever because they're trolling somebody with nonsense. Uh, also, I think the ad share, the ad revenue share is also helping things because certain content hasn't been being, isn't being monetized based on some of the keywords that are being, being used. And this is changing, uh, back and forth. Like every other day, it seems like sometimes they're using filters based on words and sometimes they're not. But I think those two things, it's, it's starting to really impact what people see. Like the hate might still be there. Like a, some of it might be buried in the show more areas of your comments, but I'm not seeing it because I, I never even click show more and most people don't. So I think the fact that the, the blue check replies get boosted towards the top of the stream of replies under a post and the show more areas being designated for some of the people that probably aren't, aren't very likely to post good content. I think those are all helping things. Right. Well, I'm, you know, obviously uh, an Elon Musk fan and, uh, you know, I'm a believer that, you know, look, look, check yeah, it out. I have it right here. Right. <laughs> I have it bookmark on the Twitter section. Cause you know, it's, there's a lot, right. I mean, you know, he kind of wrestled with, do I really want to do this? You know, was this a terrible idea? And I think there's a lot of pushback on some of the changes that we're seeing. One of the most recent ones is this whole idea that you can, create a setting where only verified users can reply to your posts. And that one is strikes me as a little odd. And so I've heard, you know, the complaint from a lot of people that well, free speech is like 
not really becoming free anymore, right? To have the best experience, you should really pay for that blue check mark. So what do you think about, you know, this idea of we want this to be like the best platform for free speech, but then you got to pay up? Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of get both sides of that argument. I, I think first of all, like, like, it's up to me, right? So like, like, if I want people to be able to reply to my content, I think that's part partially what free speech is about, right? Like I have the freedom to say if I want people interacting with with what I'm posting on a on a social media platform, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, now, whether you can argue that having to pay to get your speech boosted is kind of counter to free speech, I get that argument. Uh, but I, I don't know if I, I kind of feel like that's something that might be required so that free speech can be propagated uh, because that's what's going to cut down on the bots. And that's also going to be what's what cuts down on a lot of the hate. So I, I think there's a kind of a happy medium there where where you might have to give a little bit in the name of free speech to actually get free speech. Mm -hmm. Right. And improve it because, you know. Right what Twitter was before with this whole stay woke <laughs> uh, culture was not, not the greatest. Um, yeah. I, I mean, like, like I'm on the left and, and I agree, like, like Twitter was definitely run by people that were leaning more left. And, and if you go back and look, they, they acted differently towards people who were on the left versus right. And, and it, when I say that, I mean that they were banning people on the right more. I, I don't think anybody can deny that. Right. And now people are accusing X of being more right leaning. Yeah. Yeah. Which we don't really you know, want like, either. Yeah. Like, like, I, I definitely think that after Elon took over, I think a lot of people on the left left. Uh, but I think that they gradually came back. You had all these other platforms popping up, like right after he took over. And some of them went there, probably thousands of them went there. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think that with social media, you, you need people in order to make the platform good. And, and if you don't have this critical mass, like X has, uh, people are going to come back to the places that have that critical mass and these new platforms, they might've had it for a few weeks, but eventually people started leaving. Yeah. It's just, it's just crazy to reflect on like so many of the changes. It seems like almost every change that he's made, like people have hated <laughs> like the new one with like removing headlines or this whole idea that you can still kind of block people, but you'll still see them in your timeline. I mean, it's, it's been interesting to see, you know, I, I hope that they all, they all work out, but some of them still have me scratching my head a little bit. Yeah. Like I, I, I kind of feel that Elon doesn't always think things through completely and he gets this idea and he's like, okay, this is it. Like he said that with like a, getting rid of, rid of the ability to block people. And everybody was like, oh no, we need the ability to block people. And then he clarified like a day later or two days later after there was this uproar, well, we'll get rid of the block feature, but there'll be some sort of like an, an enhanced mute feature. So, so like, like I, I think that Elon realizes that, that he'll make mistakes himself and X will make mistakes and they'll learn from those mistakes and they'll adjust in the appropriate way. I mean, if you obviously you read, read the book, the Walter Isaacson book, you know that he admits he makes mistakes when he does and he uses those mistakes to, to better adjust in the future. Right. Well, he's just rapid iteration all the way, whether it's, you know, blowing up rockets or yeah. uh, making changes that really ruffle feathers. I mean, Really, it's kind of crazy how many how many people have been pissed off about the whole X takeover. But I'd like to believe that, especially as a creator, I'm really hoping that, you know, it's it ends up being the best platform for creators um, and journalists, too. I, I guess. What are your thoughts on the future of journalism on the platform? Because we you know, we see there's a lot of hate toward the mainstream media. Local TV news is a dying industry. I know personally, after working in it for eight years, you know, that it's struggling. I mean, its demographic is literally dying, right? Yeah, I, I mean, things are changing and changing fast. And and if anything, X is definitely going to amplify the citizen journal journalist. I think there's some some things that could go wrong there as well. There's people that think they're journalists and, and they 
they cover things inaccurately. But I think if you mix that with community notes, it can be quite powerful. Uh, and, and, and like mainstream media, it's not going to go anywhere, but I think it will adapt. And I think yet that you will see mainstream media using X as a social platform a lot more. Uh, clearly, uh, X is trying to kind of snuff out some of the links to articles and, and get people to start posting on X. And, and I actually think that's going to work, especially if monetization continues to ramp up. Uh, if, if journalists can make more money writing long form content on X than they can working for a CNN or Fox News, then I, I think they're going to do that. Right. That's a good point, actually. So the whole idea is to spend more time on the platform. But, you know, if you're a, a journalist who has a sub stack, you know, put that on content on X and yeah, stop having these external links that take you away. OK, interesting. It seems like these do have good intentions, but it'll just take a while for people to get used to. Yeah, I, I mean, like, what has it been like 10 months since Elon took over? I mean, like, think about how much has happened in those 10 months and how how some of the things he's done has started out as what appeared to be a disaster. And then as we, we've gone forward, it appears that maybe they're not such disasters after all, and maybe there's an actual plan here. And, and I, I don't think Elon has a perfect plan. I, I think he probably doesn't even know what some of his plan is. He has an end goal, I think which is all about free speech and, and making Twitter this platform, this everything app. But I, I think that like how he's going to get there, maybe he doesn't know the exact steps yet. And I think we're all learning kind of along the way what, what's best. Right. Yeah, it is. It It is frustrating, though, because it seems like it has become uh, more divisive, even more so than before. And I just I feel like there there's a lot of controversy surrounding Elon. And so some people just don't even want to be on the platform because it's, you know, Elon affiliated, shall we say? Yeah, it, it's, it's weird what is happening, like in the media with Musk. Uh, I, I, I don't really get it. I, I, I think I, I, I understand some of the criticisms about him, like I've criticized him in the past for things that I disagree with. But if you look at the overall trajectory of what he's doing with all of his companies, uh, I, I think there's no doubt that he's out to help humanity and just help everyday people like you and I. Uh, I think maybe there's this void in the media and and they need need a bad guy. And they're kind of creating this imaginary bad guy and using some of the things he says, which which might be kind of uh, kind of. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't agree with everything he says about some some of the political takes he has. I think they're using those to try and try and stem or trying to seed this hatred towards him, so that they have something to talk about and they can get more clicks. It's kind of like the Trump of today is Elon Musk. Like like they're you're trying to look for every little thing, even though maybe some things he does is bad or or they see as bad. Not everything is, but they're trying to make it as if everything is. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think you can look at his other companies and missions and see that obviously reusable rockets and electric cars are for the betterment of humanity. But I think a lot of people were puzzled over the Twitter takeover and like, you know, is this whole idea of protecting free speech really something he should focus on? Is this a pet project? So I'm hoping that you know, it, it, uh, it, it, it does turn out to be something that he doesn't like regret or, you know, stay si excited about. Cause even in the book, he kind of flip flops. Yeah. He's excited yeah. about it. And then he's like, God, this is a pain in the ass. And then he's like excited about it again. It's gotta be a yeah. hard thing yeah. to take on. I remember the one chapter where he was, uh, he was wondering like, like, should I even bother anymore? Like, shouldn't, maybe I should be concentrating on AI instead, XAI. And uh, I'm sure he goes back and forth flip flops. But I, I do think that ultimately, like we, we need somebody like Elon uh, in charge of X. Uh, we need this social platform. We need something that that is immune to AI and the bots that you're going to see, the, the scraping you're going to see. I, I don't understand how Facebook or Instagram or these other platforms are going to survive unless they adopt some of these things that Musk is doing with X, like the verification and the, and the small fee, monthly fee. Uh, I, I think he's ahead of his time. 
I, I know he's ahead of his time uh, and he's, he's looking like three, four or five, six years into the future and saying, hey, like this is going to be a problem. AI is going to start scraping everything. There's going to be AI bot armies. Uh, we got to figure something out. And also free speech is important. You can't have you can't have a few people at a corporation deciding what can and cannot be uh, presented to millions or even billions of people. Uh, I, I really think that community notes, I, I think that they're undervalued. Um, yeah, they're slow to roll out. Uh, they actually made improvements probably in the last uh, week or so where notes go live a lot sooner. The system's not perfect. Uh, I mean, we've seen tweets uh, that got community noted where like somebody said that Elon Musk is, I don't know, going to kill himself or something. And then somebody community noted it and said it was accurate and it actually went live. Uh, but <laughs> overall, I think that if community notes can actually uh, continue to improve, and I think that if more note takers can be approved for the system, it's going to be super powerful in countering a lot of the misinformation, uh, a lot of the lies that are propagated. And like I said, like with AI, there's so many things that are going to happen. And one of them is deep fakes. You're going to have videos and you already do uh, that are inaccurate and have people saying things they aren't. And I think the best way to counter that is kind of through the, this hive mind system where hundreds of people can actually get together and say, is this legit or not? And kind of debate it behind the scenes before a note is placed on it. So definitely, definitely if you're, if you're attacking X, because of misinformation, uh, at least understand how community notes works and, and how things will probably continue to improve over the next year. And every social media platform has this problem. At least X seems to have at least somewhat of a solution. I remember walking through Twitter in the old days and they had like, I don't know, 20 employees at that point. And I was like walking through and going, all right, people, are you gonna keep uh, this service up and running during an earthquake? Because back then it was not reliable at all. And if any stress came on the system, it would go down, right? Well, they fixed those problems. Now it does stay up during earthquakes, right? So now we have a different question. If I was walking through the engineering team, I, I'd have different questions like, you know, how are you rewriting this? Uh, what's the architecture for rewriting it? How are you going to put AI in it? What kinds of features are you going to be able to do once you get there? That That's what would be interesting to me. And then it's an Elon Musk company. So how are you going to hook it up to uh, Tesla's database, right? Uh, and and uh, how are you going to integrate X into a Tesla car? What he promised or what he wanted to do was this town square where people talk, debate, scream, and love, right? Where there, and, and where people probably learn to debate without hating. We're very far from that today. We're now in a paying up scheme, which probably helps with the bots. But I'm actually surprised because with AI and the whole thing, you would think that bots could find a technological way of being dealt with rather than a paying up thing. I want X to be profitable. Only profitable businesses will at the end of the day, you know, help to serve everybody else. You can't as a society have a business that is constantly losing money. And Twitter was constantly losing money, right? So let, let, I understand that things have to move, but I don't like the way this is moving at the moment. Now. Again, I don't like it, but yet here still, I still am. I still like it much, much more than any other social media platform. I still like it much, much more than any other way of expressing my opinions. I, I have a Substack account since Twitter has the long form tweets, never published anything there anymore. So it's one of those things where there is no better option, but this option isn't optimal yet.